G'day, I'm Kim Elman, and I recently flew from Marseille to Budapest with Ryanair, and then after the Hungarian GP, home to Australia with Qatar Airways Business Class. Two completely different offerings. But first up, why did I choose Ryanair? Because it is the only airline flying direct from Marseille to Budapest. But my gosh, have a look at this terminal. It's very basic, uh, huge queues. The air conditioning is just a simple grey tube with a few holes poked into it. The counter's up here, well, they've saved some dollars on that, that's for sure. And everything costs, bags, check-in. So in the end, I doubt that you're actually saving much money on other full service airlines, but you're just doing all of the work yourself and they're making more profit. I actually bought a 20 kilo bag and a 10 kilo bag. The big one was 26 and the small one was six, so I was a little bit over, but between the two, they said fine. Now you gotta take your bags and drop them off at another place. Drop my luggage off, did security using the fast track, and now I'm going to gate number one to board. Do you want passport as well? Passport, yeah. So this is the lounge, well, also the boarding area. There are some seats, but as you can see down here, there's just a rail for us to lean against and we're in the priority queue and out here our planes just arrived but it's supposed to take off at 12.50, it's 12.30 and they've got to deplane that and then get us on there so I kind of figure this one's going to be late. We've just taken off on this Ryanair flight. What are the seats like? Not the worst I've sat on but there's not much padding on the backs. Thankfully the armrest does go up on the aisle. You can't miss that you're on a Ryanair jet because they've got plenty of signage all around the place and interestingly the safety instructions are printed on the back of the seat but I've not found any sick bags so if you're going to vomit and you don't get much notice it could be an ugly scene but surprisingly there's good leg room. Having pre-ordered the food Celia comes past and gets her little computer out and says right main course you can have this this or this this is what you get for a snack this is what you get for a drink. So I've ordered lasagna, sparkling mineral water, and a chocolate. How was the lasagna? It was pretty bloody good. I didn't think 10 euros was too bad for those three items, so I've gone and ordered another meal deal. Well, that was my first Ryanair flight, and the second meal I had, the panini, wasn't as good as the lasagna, which was quite a surprise. So would I fly Ryanair again if it was the only direct flight? Yeah. Pretty much the whole of the time prior to the flight you're spending standing in a queue for something. It's not a joyful experience, but it's not altogether unpleasant. Anyway, we're here in the Budapest Arrivals Hall, and as you can hear, it's uh, noisy, busy. And shortly my luggage will be coming off and I'll be grabbing a car and heading into the city of Budapest, which I quite love. Just over my shoulder, here's my car. It's a Sayat with 57 kilometers on the clock, so it'll smell new. Shall I Thank take this one too? I'll take that one. Okay. Have you been waiting long for me? Hello, sir. Say hello to my friends. How are you doing, friends? I do love this hotel. Great room. It's a beautiful position right in the centre of town. There's the big Ferris wheel just in the park, and next door is the Ritz Carlton. And come Thursday night, this will be pumping out the front with hundreds of people waiting to catch a glimpse of perhaps six or eight drivers that may stay in these two hotels. That said, I've now got seven days in this city. So the next time I speak to you will be after the Hungarian GP when I make my way back to Australia on the Qatar flights. Going from Ryanair to Qatar, big difference. and I'm looking forward to it. Well, I've had a most glorious week here at the Kempinski Hotel in the centre of Budapest, but sadly my time has come to head back to Australia. So it's off to the airport and then two flights with Qatar Airways. 24 minutes to travel 17 kilometres. Goodbye Kempinski Hotel. And if you like great dance music and you're in Budapest, tune your car radio to Radio 1, my new favourite station. But first we have to get petrol. You need the papers of the car to buy fuel. Curious. Thank Person you. On. That worked out at about 1.7 euros per litre. Can anyone tell me in the comments why you have to produce your car's documents to buy fuel? I'm going to Perth, Australia. Business class? Business class. Two for you, madam. Hello. Thank you. Sorry. This time I've left my uh, mount for my mobile phone in the car 
and having gone through security, thankfully not customs, I can go out and get it. Hopefully they've found the bloody thing. So this Euro car office can't contact the other one, so I've now got to walk back there, which is uh, quite a hot and long walk. But anyway, it's worth going. So let's have another crack. This? Yeah. Thank you very much. You are welcome. Kirsten, um, I forget this a lot. We did not bank on getting that back, that's for sure. So uh, thank you, Europe car. And I caught the shuttle bus back, which was great, very quick and uh, nice and cool. Second time through security and now second time through the duty-free store. There's a very big queue for passport control here and tempers are getting frayed in front of me. This is the lounge that Katta uses here in, uh, what country is this? Hungary. And it's not one of their finest lounges and the hot food stops at 3pm. It's now 10 to 4. My flight takes off at 4.35. But I've got a quick Samo and that'll do me. Mm -hmm. May I see your boarding pass and the passport please? Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. Have a nice flight, sir. Thank bye. you. Bye. Hello. Hello. Welcome, sir. Mr. Kim, you can go on the left hand side of the window. So this is QR200 to Doha, 4 hours and 55 minutes. This is an Airbus A320, 12 seats in business class, two on either side of the aisle. Very comfortable. All customers have now boarded and this aircraft is bound for Doha. Good, oh, that's where we want to go. Doha on the way to Perth. Uh, already we've got a little uh, welcome drink and a moist towelette. You've got a little travel with confidence kit which has face mask and other stuff. We get lunch served on this four hour, 50 minute flight. At the moment we're nearly passing over Turkey. I've just had a lobster and scallop starter. I'd give that a five out of 10. And for main course now, I've ordered the salmon. It's got a bit of mashed potato and some vegetables. I'd give that an eight and a half out of 10. We're about 30 minutes away from landing into uh, Hamad International Airport in Doha. How does this seat compare to Ryanair? Well, it's amazingly superior, of course. Ryanair don't go back a centimetre. This turns into a fully lie-flat bed. You do have to wear masks on this flight, except for when you're eating or doing a little bit to video camera. But I'll be bluntly honest, no one else in business class has got this on. And I doubt very much whether any of the economy passengers are wearing it. We've got this fog coming out of the air conditioning ducts. I imagine it's pretty hot outside because it is uh, August. That's the first class lounge, the business class lounge on the other side. And have a look at this amazing piece of art here. I love the heat haze. I've got about two and a half hours on the ground here and I've chosen to spend it in this special quiet section of the business class lounge for Kata. I think it's got better air conditioning than out there. It's got far less noise, comfortable seats, but no food. I'm always interested when I go to bathrooms like this one here in the lounge and see those towels perfectly rolled. I thought they were machine rolled, but nope, done by hand. This restaurant behind me has massive ceilings. That must be, I'm guessing 25 meters from floor to ceiling. Thank you, Mr. Elman. Nice to meet you, sir. Good hey, morning, sir. Welcome on board. Mr. King, we'll be straight into your back on board this 777-300ER and we've got the Q suite. Now this is the first time that I've flown forward facing. The previous two flights I've taken this year with Kata have been with the rear facing seat. But the interesting thing about the forward facing seat is that we have a seat belt that has an airbag built in. So if you had the choice you'd always take the one that doesn't have the airbag which is the rear facing seat. Once again I've got an amenities kit and for me the only thing in there worth keeping and it is a fantastic fragrance. Is this one called 34 by Diptyque. I love it and uh, I've amassed quite a collection. And this cabin has a little bit more room inside here with this being a little bit larger than one I had in uh, 1J which is the cabin in front of me. And yes the door closes so you get this absolute privacy and as I've said before this is so close to being a first class product on lesser airlines. And what is the cost of a return fare from Australia to Europe in the Q-Suites? Bloody lot of money. And unfortunately there are no bargains at the moment because travel out of Australia is so popular that you can't get a flight. So there's certainly no bargains to be had. It's 2.30 a.m. local time. And what have we got on the menu champagne-wise? One I've never heard of. This one. Uh, I have had the Charles Heidsieck Rosé. If you haven't seen my wine review, go back and look at a couple of videos ago when I went to Europe. I tasted every single wine on the plane. Food-wise today we have wok fried vegetable fried rice with charcoal grilled chicken. I'd eat that. Hot 
hot pulled oxtail open sandwich on toasted brioche. Yes. Thank you very much. Pajamas just delivered. Not that I ever wear them because I pack shorts and a t-shirt because invariably I find the cabins are warmer rather than cooler. Certainly happy we've got a screaming child in front of us. It's 11 hours to Perth or thereabouts. And then I'm home for three weeks before we head back to Spa. We're coming into land at Perth. I think I had about five hours sleep. The meal was good. I just had a little taster because I'm going out tonight with my family. So it was just a chicken satay with some rice. It was good. Half of the plane is devoted to business class, so it's obviously a pretty good earner for this airline, but really it's a it's a macular product. And how does this stack up with Ryanair? Of course it kills it. It was always gonna kill it. But then again, it's probably what seven, nine times the price. But if you have the chance to travel cat or Q suites, do it. It's a really pleasant experience. Anyway, prepare for landing. We've had big storms and there's a total power failure here at the airport. So the duty free is in darkness. We had to take the stairs off the plane in the cold and wet, but it was uh, quite a rare opportunity to get shots of a, a big aircraft from the tarmac. But anyway, the um, systems are all working to get through, so uh, let's go and do that. It's pitch black out here, windy, cold. My son's got the car, thankfully. Here he is. About 400 laps of the bloody airport. I'm off to dinner now with my family, two of whom are there, at the Crown Casino at the Nobu restaurant. Hey! Hello. <laughs> Hello, Mickey. Hello. Come here, come here. If you've enjoyed the video, please hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't done so, and become a member. You'll find all of my digital images at ProStarPix.com. For merchandise, F1 photo books, Lots of other stuff, head to kimelman.com and for my best pictures live from the track and all during the week, it's Instagram at Kim Ilman. Thanks for watching and stay passionate. This is QR flight. Looking up for your safety and comfort, today is our uh, cabin.